So in this video, I'm going to talk through how we can use a technique known as completing the square in order to find the turning point of a quadratic. So the general form of a quadratic um, is typically presented like this. So you end up with ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. Now remember that our quadratics are typically going to look something like this, or like this, depending on uh, whether they're a the happy face or the sad face kind of shape. And one of the key points associated with them is the turning point. So that's where it changes direction. So for this case, it's this top point, And for this case, it's the bottom point. And from this particular form, it's quite difficult to kind of anticipate where that is going to fall. So what we can do is if we do a bit of manipulation, we can make our equation look something like this instead. And what we find is if we can write it this way, the P that you see and the Q here correspond to where the um, turning point actually lies. That's its coordinates. So PQ would be here or here, depending on which uh, situation you have. So it's in our interest then to try and make it look like this so we can just directly read out what these numbers are for P and Q. And that's where this completing the square technique kind of comes in. And it relates to the fact that we have like um, something all in brackets and squared. All right, this is the bit that's from completing the square. So it all comes from this kind of rule that we have down the bottom here. So a plus b all squared can be expanded to look like this. Now remember the expansion comes from like if you have it written out in full. All right, the squared means you have two of these brackets and you apply your like FOIL technique in order to expand and then you can simplify it to this. So what that means is we're able to write something that has these um, squares uh, in it and looks a little bit messy into something that's a little bit cleaner with all the brackets, which is what this is up here. So I'm going to do a couple of examples of how to do this uh, technique. I'm going to start with numbers and then we're going to do the general case. So for this first one here, I'm going to try and find the turning point of this particular quadratic function using that completing the square technique. So my first step that I'm going to try and employ is I want to figure out what I would need to put in brackets in order for my expansion to end up with x squared plus 6x. Okay. So what you're going to find for this is that you essentially take the b value, all right, which is 6 in this case, all right, remember that b corresponds to the constant in front of the x term, and you divide it by 2. All right, so I'm going to do this off to the side. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, all right, and my uh, variable, I guess, in this case is x, and I'm going to square it. And what we should find is when we expand, what falls out corresponds to this first part of our equation. So if we follow this rule here, otherwise you can do it the long way by manually expanding. But what we should find is that we end up with x squared falling out, which corresponds to the a squared part. We've then got 2 times a times b, all right, in our case 2 times x times 3, which is 6x overall. And then we end up with b squared falling out. So that's going to be 3 squared, which is 9. And hey presto, we see that this front part here corresponds to what we have over in our equation. So what I'm going to do is write out this with our plus 9. Okay? And what we know is that this can now be rewritten as the x plus 3 squared. However, we can see that these lines currently aren't at the moment equal. All right, We've got this plus 7 on the end and now we've got a plus 9, so definitely not the same. So what I can do is I like to think of it as, okay, I've just added 9 to my equation. If I take 9 away, then those cancel out and essentially it's like nothing happened. And then I've just got to carry down my plus 7 on the end. Okay, so all we've done from this line to this line is we've added 9 and taken it away, which did nothing overall. But what it means is this first part in here, I can now replace, all right, because we know it equals x plus 3 all squared. And we have minus 9 plus 7, we can simplify that. Overall, that becomes minus 2. Okay, so now what we've done is written this by um, completing the square in that other form we had before. So scrolling up, all right, if we copy this form down to what we had below, we should be able to read out these new constants a, p, and q. All right, so we can write this as a outside of x minus p all squared plus q. 
And looking at this, all right, A is the number out the front, which is like a one. All right, so A equals one, that's not really important. And we could have really got that from before because it's like the one outside here as well. What is important though is the P and the Q. So we can see that negative P is equal to three, which means that P would be equal to negative three. All right, just watching for that negative. And then we've got Q is equal to negative two. All right, so now what we can say is we know the turning point is at P, Q, which means that in our case, it's gonna be at negative three, negative two. And in fact, I have gone and done this on Wolfram Alpha. I've called it for the turning point of our function. And if you scroll down, it will confirm exactly what we had. So the minimum value of our function is at negative two, which we can see here. All right, that's the y value, and the x value it occurs at is negative three. So the coordinate is negative three, negative two, which is exactly what we had. So that confirms that. All right, so I'm gonna do another example now. We've got four x squared plus eight x plus 12, and we're gonna try and apply this um, completing the square technique again to figure out the turning point. So for this one, since I'm not starting with a one out the front this time, what I wanna do is factorize so that I essentially get x on its own inside a bracket. So if I take four out the front here, I'm gonna get x squared. I'm gonna to have to do four times two x in order to get eight x. And then four times three is gonna give me 12. So that's my factorized equation. And from here, I pretty much just go through the same uh, sequence of steps. So I want to replace, instead of this being x squared plus 2x, I want to try and um, replace this with a bracket. So if I look at my b value, which is 2, and I halve it, which would be 1, what I should find is that x plus 1 all squared is going to expand out to something with x squared plus 2x. So let's do that. So we're going to end up with x squared plus 2 times 1 times x, which is 2x, plus b squared, which is 1 squared, so 1 overall. So if I come back over here, I'm going to apply the same method as what I did before. So I want to keep this x squared plus 2x, okay, because it matches what I have here. So x squared plus 2x. But now I want to make sure I have a plus 1 in here so that I can directly replace, all right? But since I've now added one, I want to cancel that out by taking away one as well. So overall, nothing actually happens in the equation. Um, my lines remain equal to each other. And then I've still got this plus three on the end. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, right, these lines are equal to each other because all I did was add one and then take one away. So the advantage of that is I'm now able to rewrite this part of my equation with a completed square. So it becomes x plus one all squared. And then we can simplify this. We've got negative one plus three, which becomes plus two overall. So my last step here is just to kind of expand this out. So I need to multiply the four by this bracket and the four by the two. So four by two is eight. And now it's in that nice form that I'm able to read things out of. So let me just write that out. So looking at this, I get four is equal to A, the number out the front. Again, we could have got that from back up the top in this other form. But the important ones is I've got negative P is equal to one. So that means P on it, uh, positive P is gonna equal negative one. And then I've got Q is equal to eight. So what this tells me is that my turning point, which we know is at PQ, corresponds to the point negative one, eight. And if I jump over again, I've popped this into Wolfram Alpha just to double check. This is our function, and we can see that uh, the minimum y value is happening at eight, and um, it's happening at an x value of negative one. So that corresponds to our coordinate, negative one, eight, which is exactly what we had. So the last thing that I want to go through is just doing the general uh, form of this equation. So converting from ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to follow again exactly the same process. 
and we want to start off by making a, kind of an x squared on its own. So I need to factorize out the a, just like before I factorized out the 4. So that means it's going to become a times x squared um, is going to give me ax squared. This one is going to have to be b divided by a times x, because the a on the top line is going to cancel with the a on the bottom line. When you expand it out, and take it back to just bx. And similarly, this one is going to end up being c on a. All right, when you expand it out, a on the top times the a on the bottom cancel out, and you're just left with c on its own. All right, so the next thing is that I want to replace the x squared plus b on ax um, with a completed square. So I need to look at what this um, value is, so b on a, and I want to divide it by 2, okay, just like we did before. So if I divide b on a by 2, I end up with a 2 on the bottom line. And what I should find is if I square all of this, it should expand to include the x squared and b on a uh, x parts. So expanding this, I get x squared plus I get 2 times x, write it out long, times b over 2a. And then I'm going to get this last bit all squared. So b on 2a all squared. So this one's a little bit messier. So I can do a bit of cancelling here. The 2 on the top line is going to cancel with the 2 on the bottom line. So I could write this as just b over a times x. And this one here, when I expand out, I need to apply the square to the top line and the bottom line. So applying the square here is quite straightforward. It's just b squared. And down the bottom, everything needs to be squared. So 2 squared is going to give me 4. And a squared um, is just a squared. All right, but what we can see is that we've ended up with the first two terms here matching against what we had in the equation, which is what I was looking for. So going through the process again, I'm going to replace, oh, sorry, I'm going to write um, my x squared plus b on a x plus I want to include this extra bit so that I'm then able to replace it with my completed squared. So plus b squared on 4a squared. And then because I've added this, I need to also take it away so that my lines uh, remain equal. All right, and we still need to carry through. We've got our C on A at the end. So again, just to reiterate, I've added this random constant on, but I've just taken it away as well. So nothing really happened overall and my lines remain equal. So now what I can do is I know that all of this part here can be replaced with my x plus b on a, 2a, sorry, all squared. All right, and then I've still got this random stuff on the end, and unfortunately there's not much I can kind of do with it. So we'll just carry it through. So the last step here is just to multiply out the a. All right, so a multiplied by this bracket, it's just going to kind of end up out the front. I'm going to get a times this next term. I'll write it out long. And then I'm going to get a times this last term as well. So if we clean this up, I've got a on the top line and I've got two a's on the bottom. So overall, it's just going to leave me one on the bottom. So this is going to become b squared over 4a. And then here, a on the top line, a on the bottom line, they're going to cancel out. So we're just left with c. And what we see now is that it kind of follows that um, pattern that we were looking for right, with the completed squares. So we should be able to read out. We've got a equals a, which is what we'd expect. So that's good, I guess. All right. We've got negative p is equal to b over 2a. So that means positive p is going to be negative b on 2a. And then q is just this random constant that we see on the end. So negative b squared over 4a plus c. So that means generally um, we can always just find the turning point using this 
um, equation now. So you don't even need to go through the process of completing the square if you don't want to. You can just read out what a, b and c are from the original ax squared plus bx plus c form and substitute them in here. So this is, I guess, the derivation of that general um, form of the equation. So that's all there is uh, in terms of this video.